Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Desmos graphic tutorial. Um, so uh, today we're going to pick right off from where we left off last time. So last time uh, we we had an ear, we got an ear started, and uh, also I also told you all that uh, at for this bottom part uh, we're um, we're going to just start with. An inverse sine function, uh, and this is its parent function right here. Uh, and uh, um, and I believe I did talk a little bit about function transformation, and uh, in the in our first few videos, um, but uh, I'll go over right now. So, so to begin. Uh, we want to find out where where uh, where this point is right here at the very edge of the circle. So the very edge of well, it's more of an ellipse. So the very edge is uh, so we have third seven negative thirteen oh five, and then and uh, we're gonna move it over by. So that's 0 0.05. Yeah, 0 0.05. Um, so you know what? I'm not gonna. I don't want to go through the troubles because this 1.5 square. That's that's going to ruin our results by a little bit. It completely ruin it. So that's negative 13.083. We'll work with that. Then um, so then we're gonna go ahead and add thirteen point zero eight three. So now this now this point of inflection is going to line up with this one. That's not what we want. We want we uh, we want to have a shape like this, and this line is. Is it facing the wrong way? So uh, let's make it negative. And uh, this graph also has an amplitude of one. Well, the length from this point, the horizontal length from this point all the way to the very end is one. And uh, let's shrink the amplitude. It, uh, well, scaling the function down. Now uh, is is rather convenient because unlike unlike ellipses, we, we don't have any uh, any uh, squarings or powers to deal with. So so I believe we also multiply this by two to uh, keep the scales even. So and, uh, I want to make some adjustments as well. And uh, this y value is 0 0.4, 0 0.4729. I want to make a note of it down here. This is negative, but but uh, it is it is clear that's negative because we're below the x-axis. No, yeah, we're, we're below the x-axis. Um. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on scaling it until I get the one that I want. So I'm gonna keep on shrinking it. Start with eight. Looks like I need to go even further. Let's give 20 a try. Let's see, what's a nice convenient number to work with? I feel like I'm out of those. Uh, I 
And let's work with this for now. So this amplitude is going to be 0 0.05. So I want to add 0 0.05 to this. So that's going to be... So now I'm going to subtract... Zero point five two two nine. That went too far. That's that's still a little too much. I need to scale this down even further. You know what? Um let's just save the trouble of having to having to sit through this I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jump it so uh, see you guys in a little bit all right um so I I spent a few minutes to get, get the numbers worked out add to zoom in in by a lot and um uh, and I had to do a lot of approximations to get the numbers worked out. For those following along, uh, the numbers are right here in front of you. For those of you who, who uh, did not follow along and are and uh, are going off on your own, um, if if you run into a situation like this, uh, you have to zoom in by a lot, and uh, and numbers start to not match up. And and even even trying to treat and even tracing the point doesn't work out. So for me, this one, uh, so this y value is, says uh, zero point four eight two nine, but this one actually stops at zero point four seven two nine. But if I move it up up to uh, zero point four seven two nine, it it will it will shoot up and it would not line up at all. So uh, so I had to had to uh, move around. So, it, so if you want to get these things to line up, you want to change, you want to play around with this value right here, uh, to uh, to get to, to get the horizontal shift worked out, and uh, and also this number worked out right here. So this is the uh, vertical movement. Uh, this is a minus, so we're we're, uh, we're moving it below the y-axis. And uh, and uh, this number tells you how much you're moving down. We don't need this anymore. Okay, um. So so the next part. So now uh, we're gonna do this bottom part of the of the ear, and uh, we don't need to do much approximation there. Uh, so first we need to know what this point is. What? So first, uh, let's get a uh, an idea of where we want the circle to be lining up. So this looks like it's to be a uh, negative thirteen point zero five. Um, this. So we're gonna start with the, the bottom half circle. Uh, um, even though this, our, our circle radius is gonna be uh, really small, I still like to start with one. Plus thirteen point zero five squared. One like shift six, and then uh, this looks like a negative zero point five. Okay, and then uh, we'll adjust the circle values from there. Now we need. Reduce the radius by by a bunch so we can actually see it. I want to calculate to see what one over forty values to zero point zero two five. That's I mean it's 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 still a nice clean decimal. It doesn't have many places to it. So it's it's so it's a quarter divided by ten. So a quarter is zero point two five, and then you move move one decimal place over to get zero point zero two five. Okay. 
I might have to get half it even more. So this now becomes 0 0.0125. And uh, now we want to get this y value right here. 5033. And then uh, this x value. 13.059 and now uh, I want to add no actually subtract from this value so I'm not gonna so first I'm gonna say 13.059 uh, and then I'm going to move it over to the right by 1 over 80. So uh, you don't have to just save the trouble of doing all the calculations yourself. So this is the outside of, of the ear that, uh, that, I'm, that I'm going to do. And for the inside of the ear, there's, there, there, uh, there's a lot of detail going on inside. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and if we add all those details in, it's going to it's it's going to it's, it's going to like it's going to ruin our it's going to ruin the picture of, of the ear, rather than rather than uh, make it look better. So so for that purpose, I'm just going, I'm going to make two arcs: one going uh, one uh, one a long one on the top and a shorter one on the, on the bottom. There are a few choices that you can use. Uh, since since I want to add a little bit of variety, add uh, and and not keep on using ovals and circles. Uh, I I want to use is plain parabolas. Not the most exciting equation, but hey, it it keeps a variety. So we got absolute values. We got. Uh, we've got square roots, we've got inverse trig functions. <laughs> and now we're, now we're gonna bring in the parabola. If you want more exotic equations, uh just let me know down in the comments. I can suggest you some complicated ones that do the same thing, but why make it so complicated? Y equals so it's so it's downward facing parabola. And it's going to be x plus 13 point, yeah, it's 0, 0.5 squared. And then we're going to subtract 0 0.5 to start with. What oh, looks better? 4 or 5 is too tall. Six, add a five to it maybe. And I'll leave at that. And then um, and uh, and, and uh, if if you if you keep a number uh, above, so if this is not. So if you keep this number greater than or equal to one, uh, you can start start to uh, start uh, squishing on your parabola, so we can get a more realistic looking arc. Okay, so for our first arc, I'm gonna go with go with this one right here. And for the second one, I want to use a duplicate feature to create a copy of it. And then uh, and I want to press on this even more. And I might even move it over. That's too much.
I'm gonna go with this. Um, okay, so this is gonna go from. I'm gonna take this point. They have 13.066. This is 044. And for this one, we're going to use the same bounds. Okay, and let's change. Let's uh, make these lines black again, and we'll and we'll pick things. And then uh, next time, uh, we'll start drawing in the facial features. Okay, I'll I'll see you then.